If I had a gold piece for every time a game has been derailed because two players stop to discuss whether they're guilty of accidental metagaming, I'd be as wealthy as a brass dragon. Not that brass dragons are any richer than any other dragon necessarily, but they are my favorite dragon. Metagaming, of course, is the modern term generally used to indicate when a player has their character perform some action in the game based on knowledge that the character could not possibly possess. People often frown upon this and sometimes take the definition of metagaming to the extreme, but I don't mind metagaming, and I don't think people should worry about it in their games either, and in this video I'm going to explain why. First, a quick caveat. I am aware that some players just don't understand that fun is meant to be evenly distributed and use metagaming as a way to, quote, win, unquote, what becomes essentially their own private D&D session, with everyone else playing as their forced audience. Those people aren't fun to play with, and they ruin game sessions, gaming groups, and discourage new players from turning into regular players. This post is not intended to empower people who cheat, bully, or otherwise make gaming and not fun experience. Furthermore, the problem in those cases is not metagaming. The problem in those cases is that a person doesn't understand how to treat other people with respect. Debating whether they're metagaming when they just happen to know exactly where all the best loot in the module is located and they know all the plot points well in advance. In those cases, metagaming is a symptom, not the cause. The problem is the person, the fact that they metagame, is but a reflection of the fact that they're not compatible with a cooperative game. What I'm talking about about in this video is the concern of metagaming in a game where everyone is genuinely attempting to play the game as intended. One problem with calling out a, a player, yourself included, for metagaming is that nobody seems to be able to agree on what qualifies as metagaming. Take this example scenario. A rogue breaks away from the party to investigate a secret door. While separated from the party, the rogue is attacked by a zombie, but luckily her fellow players hurry to her rescue, even though there's really no way they could have known in-game she was being attacked. The only reason the characters rushed to help is because the players heard the game master and the rogue player enter combat. That's inarguably metagaming. By many people's ruling, it's flat-out cheating. Regardless of how you feel about it, though, it's a good upper limit for a definition of metagaming. Anything less severe than that example, though, are harder to classify. I've witnessed debates about whether it's metagaming to not cast true polymorph on a flesh golem. Because while the player might know that many golems are immune to such spells, the character shouldn't know that. Another example is the insight in 5e or Project Black Flag or sense motive in Pathfinder or perception roles. The theory is that a player should not know the results of their role for fear that, should they roll low, they'll understand that whatever the game master says in response, the opposite is probably true. There are arguments about metagaming that splits hairs even finer than these examples, and they inevitably slow the game down, in my experience. They distract the players and the game master, and generally turns game night into a panel discussion on the philosophy of virtualized realities. So what do the rule books say? Well, the Pathfinder 2 Game Mastery Guide has this section on metagaming. Knowledge the players have that their characters don't is called metagame knowledge, and using it to influence characters' decision is called metagaming. Some metagaming results naturally from play and is wise to disregard. The wizard aiming a fireball precisely enough to include three enemies in the very edge of the spell's area is probably unrealistic, but isn't that disruptive to play. Things get more questionable if the player says, that's a Rakshasa, so don't use divine spells against it, regardless of whether their character has ever encountered a Rakshasa before or identified the creature. Each group is different, and the assumption of what the characters know varies. If metagaming starts to get out of hand, you might just use some gentle reminders like, I'm not sure your character's aware of that, or can you explain your character's thinking when they do that? If the problem persists, see the guidelines mentioned in the Problematic Players section on page 31. Arguably, that's well written enough that there's not really that much more to say about the subject, but I, I have thoughts. And Wizards of the Coast, while I don't respect really the, the company uh, anymore, uh, certainly the, the authors of the DMG, while it's not my favorite DMG ever, the Dungeon Master's Guide 45E does have similar thoughts in its pages, saying, Discourage metagame thinking by asking players what their characters think. You can curb metagame thinking by setting up situations that will be difficult for the characters and that might require negotiation or retreat to survive. Those are two pretty, pretty big players with, with an opinion on the subject, but not that much of an opinion. And, and I think, I think this shows 
shows the fact that that metagaming essentially gets one paragraph in in each dungeon master guide or game master guide one or two paragraphs metagaming isn't seen as a serious game-breaking bug by the authors of the games. Like everyone else in the world, they don't have a solid definition for metagaming. I agree with the advice provided in the Game Mastery Guide, although I find it vague without more context. Their advice mirrors my own method for handling metagaming, both as a game master and a person with a player character sometimes. I do play as a, a character sometimes. So this may serve to expand upon the uh, Game Mastery Guide's advice, at least the way I interpret what it's saying. First, trust the mechanics. Pathfinder, D&D, Black Flag, whatever, it's a good game. It's a robust system with lots of variables handled with great alacrity. Pathfinder players know this and have known it for decades. The fact is that Pathfinder, or your favorite RPG is probably a robust and resilient game that can't be broken by metagaming. I think the authors of that system probably know that particularly well, and so none of the rule books that I've ever read have particularly belabored the concept of metagaming. A lot of them, like 5e and Pathfinder, don't even mention it in their core rule book, in the in their player's handbook. If metagaming were truly a plague upon RPGs, then no RPG would be playable after a year or two. Players learn details about monsters, they learn about the common tropes in dungeon and world design, they hear spoilers about popular published modules, and so on. And besides, even a new player could potentially be accused of metagaming the first time they encounter, for instance, an undead creature, and intuitively cast healing in hopes that it would have the opposite effect, Bizarro World style. Or the first time they encounter a Medusa and intentionally do not meet her gaze. Or the first time they encounter Strahd and reach for holy water, and, and so on. Your RPG cannot be that fragile. If it were spoilt by player knowledge, then it would be failing at being a game. 2. Game the system. RPGs have accounted for metagaming long before metagame was a term, I think. The designers intuitively understood that players were not their characters, and that gamers, by their very nature, tend to love to game the system. So the system was designed to game back. First of all, there's the Game Master. The Game Master is the first line of defense against effective metagaming. As the Pathfinder Game Mastery and the 5e DMG indicate, if players are metagaming, the Game Master can foil their plans by simply making changes to whatever it is players think they know. Are the characters rushing to help a party member they can't possibly know is in peril? A good table of dungeon traps can make them regret that decision. Is a player using knowledge about a monster to gain an unfair advantage in a fight? A quick change of the monster's skills or attacks ought to help restore balance. Now, if that feels like a slippery slope that you don't want to go down, maybe it feels like because they're metagaming, you are punishing them, it's still in, within the Game Master's purview to add surprise features outside of the specific monster, add difficult terrain, environmental effects, more monsters hiding in the shadows that only emerge when a group of other adventurers appear to slaughter the main monster, and so on. The challenge rating of an encounter is adjustable by design. The dungeon is malleable by design. The Game Master has ultimate control over the module. The possibilities are endless, and it's the system's job to ensure all the math works out, and the Game Master's job to ensure that the scenario is fresh, no matter what's overheard at the table, or read in between sessions, or has just become common knowledge from general reputation. Remember, one of the best-selling AD&D module franchises was Dragonlance, which had players moving through the stories of the Dragonlance novels that they could also pick up from their local bookstore and read. Imagine if Game of Thrones, the TV show, had encouraged viewers to go and buy the books during a season. That's exactly what Dragonlance did, and it worked. People read the novels, played the novels, bought the source books, and nothing was sacrificed. 3. Story. Many modern RPGs have a significant emphasis on story. Many of the games that I play, whether it's D&D &D Forgotten Realms, D&D &D on Kryn, Pathfinder on Galarian, Shadowrun in the Sixth World, Warhammer Wrath and Glory in the Imperium of Man, they're all really rich in lore. But gameplay spans a spectrum between story and hack and slash dungeon delve. For people interested in the sanctity of the story, metagaming is less about cheating as it is about disruption of the narrative flow. But in a way, metagaming is actually 
part of the improvised storytelling process. Because metagaming is almost always as easily explained as it is debated. When a character responds to something beyond their awareness, maybe they simply had a strange intuition that something was amiss. If it happens often, then maybe a god or extra planar being or artificial intelligence gone rogue is attempting to contact them, with a side effect being divine or extrasensory awareness. If the effort to contact them continues unanswered, this being, friendly or otherwise, might even decide to pay them a visit. When a character seems to be acting on information straight out of the monster manual or out of the module, then maybe the character has heard legends about the creature or place they're faced with. If it happens often, maybe the character is reliving an experience from their own past. Maybe they're reliving their life, and isn't it peculiar when things start happening different from the last time they uncannily experienced it. Instead of debating the metagame, you can embrace it. You can turn it into a storytelling opportunity by asking how, in the story, not at the table, the metagamed event happened. Instead of demanding a retraction of some action, ask for and encourage story-based answers, and then develop the answer further in character. In other words, it's metagaming for a player to ask another player why they're metagaming, but it's part of the story if a character asks another character how they have leapt to a seemingly random, unfounded conclusion. 4. Game Master Obligation Sometimes I'm a game master running the world, sometimes I'm a player running one character. I know all too well just how much a game master has to do during a gaming session. While I don't want to add to the list of game master responsibilities, the Pathfinder Game Mastery Guide and the 5e DMG makes it pretty clear that curbing meta gaming is up to the game master and not the players. Remember, the player handbook and the core rulebook of Pathfinder has zero mentions of meta gaming. I looked. The good news is that it's not really something a a game master has to think about. You know when someone is metagaming because they are using information their character simply doesn't have. In the rare cases that it's an actual problem, use game master fiat to make it ineffective. That secret passage that a player inexplicably is convinced exists because they spent their weekend reading the module at home, it's moved to a different location. Or maybe even a different plane. The villain's lair a player wants to rush into even though the character doesn't know who the villain is yet, there are consequences for knocking down doors without a warrant, and so on. 5. Player Obligations Play the game. This is an RPG, it's a role-playing game, and its intent is for you to play your character. If you think you might be metagaming, pause and imagine the game as a video game. Would your character in a video game have the option to take the action you're about to take? If not, then you may be gaming the real-life flexibility of tabletop RPG. If you think that may be the case, either don't do the thing you were about to do, or else announce your suspicion and let your friends help you work through it. As demonstrated, most metagaming can be explained by a better story, and it can be absorbed by what is a resilient gaming system. The show must go on. In general, I don't worry about metagaming. It's not something I'm concerned about at my gaming table. If it happens, I incorporate it into the game. It's not a big deal to me. And ultimately, in my opinion, RPG is entertainment. And as they say in the entertainment business, the show must go on. Don't let metagaming stop it.